I don't know why they had him stop working out because they had him take his shirt off in every episode. Well, yeah, but pretty soon there was nothing there but gristle. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to A Word on Westerns. Today, we have a guest who has done so many films, so many Westerns. You know him, you know his face. He's a talented actor, director, and he was also one of the stars in the very first hour-long Western on television. His name is Justice McQueen. You know him as L.Q. Jones. Give him a big hand. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Wait a minute. Wasn't he great? Give him a big oh, hand. Oh, oh, no. yes, yes, yes. <laughs> oh, there we go. Okay. Okay. Well, I know you worked with Big Clint Walker in the first hour long Western, and you played Smitty, and I think he played Cheyenne? Something like yeah. that, yes. Cheyenne Bodie. 3,000 shows later, yes. Yeah. Something like that. So those shows, when they came on, Warner Brothers had not anticipated the success of the show, and I know they used a lot of clips from their A movies to enhance the action and the stories of those episodes. What, what was it like at the Warner Brothers lot in 1955? Dead. <laughs> it, was, it was, the business was, at that point in time, I was going under. Uh, they didn't know how to cope with television. Uh, Mr. Warner would not even say the word, uh, it was quiet, they weren't doing anything, uh, but fortunately his son-in-law kept working and things worked around and they ended up with, I think we had seven TV shows at the same time uh, with uh, Cheyenne, but uh, Clint was uh, so good, uh, I was very clever, I talked myself out of about $40 million. Uh, because I, I went to Mr. Warner and said, this is a one-man show. It's, it's, two of us are wasting the film. You, you got to just throw me off and stick with Clint. Oh, no, no. We're going to stay in. Okay. So it lasted another 20 minutes, and he said, you're right. <laughs> and that was the last. I did the first three shows. Clint did the rest of them. But this, you all know what I'm talking about when I say Clint. You know what he looks like, okay? A mountain. Yeah, just it moving slightly. Uh, <laughs> and so we're doing it out of Vasquez Rocks. That's where we shot it. And he said, listen, uh, tell you what, you, you and Clint, why don't you come out and we'll put you up in a little motel. You don't have to run back and forth and you can get a little rest while we're shooting the show. Fine. So I said, bring a little clothes and you'll be there for about a week. So we did. Uh, they car picked me up. Uh, I threw my suitcase in the back. We went over and got Clint. He threw two of his in the back. We sailed over. We got there. I reached in, put mine on the ground. He put two of them on the ground, and here came the little bellhop, a kid that weighed maybe 106 pounds. But there he was, and he was on the dead run. And he circled around and came in between Clint's two suitcases. And on the dead run, he picks them up, and his feet just keep going straight up in the air, and he falls back on his back. We couldn't figure out what the hell it was. I found out later Clint had 400 pounds of weights in the suitcase. <laughs> and the kid was trying, trying to move them, but that was Clint. Um, it also went in his contract. He could no longer lift weights. Now, it's probably the only time this has ever happened in Hollywood but he was getting muscle bound. He would work. When you're, in, you're rehearsing, you stop. Clint's over picking up weights. And they finally had to stop him. He couldn't get his hands together. <laughs> but his heart was as big as the rest mm -hmm. of him. So uh, things worked. He was one of the great people of our business. Everybody loved him. I don't know why they had him stop working out because they had him take his shirt off in every episode. Well, yeah, but pretty soon there was nothing there but gristle. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he was, I'm, I'm worn out when I pick up, the, what, the morning paper. Uh, and he's doing, uh, what, 700 pound reps and all the rest of the stuff. Uh, God knows he was one of the greats of our business. It just, it was wonderful to watch him. He was a natural, he was not an actor, he was Clint, and he was that way the whole way. Mm -hmm. So. 
take my hat off to him. Dick Jones, who probably did more stunts by the time he was seven years old than uh, I did when I'm 91. Yeah. So he started out that way. He was a hell of a stunt man, a great actor for what he had to do, and uh, just a pleasure to be around. Did you, were you with him many times? Yeah, yes, I was. He was on the Golden Boot Awards committee with us, yeah. and uh, I met him when I first came to town, he and Jocko, and uh, it just I was a, a lucky TV kid who came out here and just uh, met my heroes. We met him at a church thing. Uh, and some of us go to church on Sunday, or maybe not always. Dick was always there. Mm -hmm. But if you noticed on the golden boot, Dick quit. Remember? I know. Remember why he quit? I think it was because there was an award that went to a film that he thought was terrible. That's right. Yeah. It went, not the fact that it was bad, but the fact that it was vulgar, he thought. And he said, that's it. I'm not going to stay on the golden mm -hmm. boot. We begged him mm -hmm. to stay. Remember? Yep. He'd have none of it. He used to sit with me as we would edit the film tributes to the different honorees and, you know. and had never been in an edit bay before. So uh, it, was, it was great to spend that time with him. And, of course, Dickie was the voice of Pinocchio for Walt Disney. Yeah, he too. did. And he did everything yeah. in the world. He did. Uh, and he worked, for, he worked for you later in A Boy and His Dog. Yeah, because he's cheap. <laughs> Well, he must have liked you to come in there and, and work for no, you. No, he said if, I, if he'd come do it real quick, I wouldn't pester him, so he didn't have to put up with me. Uh, but, yeah, he did a hell of a job, and it was a, it was a very specifically needed person to do the part. It was very small. Uh, I mean, we, we had people that were usually starring in pictures doing bit roles. Dick was one of them. What did, it, did you need him to do in the film? You had to, you had to, have you seen the picture? Yes, sir. Okay, it's, it's where they're showing motion pictures. And what we tried to get in the piece, starting off from the word go, was the danger is everywhere. Now, if you now take the danger being everywhere, you're in a circle uh, of old used tires, sides of buildings, uh, uh, bed springs, old cars, whatever, the, the mood is there if the guy who introduces you to that, who happened to be Dick, if he was kind of limp-wristed or just okay, then you've lost your, all your input. So the very first you have to start off with him and the dog. And it's, it's nailed down. You make one misstep here and you're a dead man. He was able to do that with maybe three lines. Mm -hmm. That's tough to do. Mm -hmm. On The Virginian, the Bell first 90-minute Western, yeah. Yeah. and you must have had a great time working with all those guys, with Jim Drury, Doug McClure. What was that like? They were terrible. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was great because it was the only show for a long time that was more than 30 minutes. Then it was more than one hour. Uh, think of that. Uh, a motion picture, let's see, I've done, they tell me, 113 pictures. Uh, the average being what? Um, 50 minutes, 60 minutes, maybe a little bit more. We had to turn out one of those every week for the Virginia. There was no expansion of days? It didn't take six or seven, eight days to shoot that? because today, You shot all the time. Yeah. Uh, you don't know whether you're doing one, two, three, four shows simultaneously mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because you're doing a bit here and something there, a, a, a line from this one. Uh, but the characters were so well established that it was pretty easy to do. Mm -hmm. uh, so, but, but Jimmy, Jane, pardon me, uh, the, the rest of the cast, superb people. Uh, Lee J. Cobb. Ever heard the name? <laughs> Anybody else? Okay. The first time I was going to work with Lee G, I was petrified. I was wetting my pants, for Christ's sake. Look at this face on Lee J. Cobb. And I'm saying, God, how do you stay alive? The talent, the ability. Okay. Here's to it. Suicide. Here we come. <laughs> After the first show, they would never let both of us in the same cast. Lee J was the funniest man that ever walked on two feet, and it was hysterical to go to work with him. 
but we made so much noise <laughs> laughing about the script and everything else, we couldn't work together. We never got to, the, the show was finished. Uh, you know, and it's, it's so much fun when you're working. Even if you're not good, it's so much fun. <laughs> Why are you laughing? No, it's, it's, okay, yes. Well, and uh, horseback riding too, because there was a lot of that. I know Doug had been uh, a, a wrangler as a teenager, Doug McClure. How did you learn to ride? I was, I was pretty old before I was riding. I was seven. Uh, I had my own horse when I was seven. Uh, I fell off of him consistently at seven, but I was there at seven. So it, uh, uh, I had no problem, and I can set a, a pretty fair horse. Uh, but this is, this is strange. Do you have any idea of the stars, okay, that ride? Which is the best in the saddle? Well, there's a lot of good ones. Glenn Ford was a good horse. Glenn Ford rider. was the best outside of uh, Ben Johnson. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's amazing to watch him, watch him when he's when he's on the horse. He's part of him. Mm -hmm. It's it's marvelous to watch him work. But I would never have thought, you know, Glenn Ford. It's we did there he was. Yeah. And I did what three shows with him, so he got he got used to it, and I could see it. What other lives are we telling? <laughs> Hi, I'm Rob Word. Thanks for watching a word on westerns. Each week we post a new episode, and all you have to do is subscribe. Right here, click on this, you won't miss a one. Adios.